All right, today we're reviewing Chapter 4 in the Green Book. This is 4-1 through 4-4. Four, four. Um, take a minute, pause the recording, and take notes on um, what each of these means, what each of these symbols. And the one thing I want you to notice is that each of these signifies a result. Is the same as, is less than, is greater than, and it symbolizes a result. And notice that they all... The wording really means is less than, is greater than. Okay? That's going to be important in a few minutes. So when I get to something like this, here's how I want you guys to graph. Okay? When you're given an inequality like x is less than or equal to 2, we read from the left. I'm going to quickly, um, since there's only one variable, I'm only doing one number line. There's two numbers I want you to record. You should be writing this. Um, I want you to have the number that the inequality talks about as well as zero and in the right order. So when you are doing, when you are graphing it, we go to the starting point, which is two. Now, because it says less than or equal to, less than or equal to, what does that mean? What kind of circle? We're reviewing a solid closed circle. And now I read from the left to the right, x is less than or equal to 2, so which direction am I going to go in that the numbers are less than, to the right or to the left? left. To the left. So I'm going to write my arrow. Now you must write use arrows on the original number line, and you must write arrows on the line that you're graphing. Some people like to do it on top, some people like to do it on the bottom, and some people like to do it here. But if you don't show me, if you just do that, I'm not going to be okay with that. You better make your line a little bit thicker. Do you understand? I don't care where it is. Do you need to do it three times? No. Yes? Um, could we use a different color? That's fine. Okay, so now... What I said is I want two numbers. So what are the two numbers for the second one that we're graphing? Yep. Zero and negative three. So I go zero, negative three. Is that correct? No. Why? Elizabeth? The negative three is supposed to be to the left. Correct. I want it in the right order of the number line. because This represents a number line. And is this going to be an open or a solid circle? Open. Yep. Open. Open circle starting at 0 or at negative 3? Um, at negative 3, and I'm going to the right because it's greater than. Are there any questions? So a solid circle is, a, is right of 0 and... Uh, solid 0, solid... Solid circle, like when, you fill in the, when you're writing the line above the number line, is, is the solid... Solid circle is positive. No, no, no. Solid is because of this little bar underneath. That means or equal to. So the one thing I want you to remember is what numbers are going to be in this solution set? What are the solutions that, what are all the numbers that are less than or equal to 2? 2 is in that solution set. Uh, 1 is in that solution set. 0. How about negative uh, 1.9999, that's in that solution set. How about negative uh, one half? How about uh, negative, uh, positive, positive? Okay, so the numbers that are in this solution set, two, one, zero, negative 1.9999, Okay, what I want you to understand is because it says equal to, that that 2 is also in this number set. Does that make sense? And then in the next one, you'll notice what goes, and it goes on and on forever. It's infinite. The reason why we do the number line is because it goes on and on forever. And we don't want to list all the solutions that are less than or equal to 2. But you'll notice there's no bar on number two. So where does my solution set begin? It begins at, it's greater than negative three, so I could start at negative, negative 2.9999, negative 2.98, negative 
2.9, and so on. Do you understand? But notice 3, negative 3 is not in this solution set. Right, so because it's not equal to. So that's what I mean by the equal to. Under the greater than or less than, correct. Yeah, for it to be a solid circle. Yeah. Now, um, now, um, okay, so now, sorry about this, I'm distracted. You'll notice that on my PowerPoint, they've written all the numbers. Do I want you to do that? No, no. it takes too much time. Just give me zero and the number. That's what I want, okay? All right, so I'm going to remind, let's, let's go back through. Number one means is greater than or equal to. How would I say number two, everybody? Is less than. Less than. Number three? Is equal to. Number four? Is less than or equal to. Number five? Is greater than. Number six? Is about. about. Good, either one, same thing. And number seven? All of these signify a result. All of these symbols. And when you see it in writing, you will see the is with it. To tell you it means a result and not, for instance, if I have five, five less than a number. What is that? Does that signify a result? No, remember we said less than means minus. When you see the than, it means flip the terms. The 5 comes over here. The number comes over here. It's x minus 5. But when you see 5 is less than a number, this signifies you use the inequality, inequality that is less than. Does that make sense? 5 is less than x. Are you guys clear on that? Yes. Okay. All right. I'm going to um, post this. You can take a, a minute, and if you want to take these as notes and have them in your journal to study with, here's what the graph looks like, here's what it looks like in words, and here's what the inequality looks like. But I'm going to go through this pretty quick because we have four sections to get through. So you can pause the recording and take those notes. All right, so now let's start translating. Number one, let's go with Francis. How would I translate it? X is greater than 18. Good. X is greater than 18. Number two, how about Irene? Not less than. Close. Y is... No, it doesn't say greater than. Good. Can you not read it? Why don't you move closer? Okay. Uh, number three, let's go Kaylee. What'd you say? 2x... Good. Less than. Less than symbol. Okay. Next one. Here's where it gets confusing. Let's go with Alex. Okay. So 2P plus 8. 2P, 8, and it has more than. So right there, it's more than means I have to switch my terms. The 2P goes first. The 8 goes after. And it means more than means plus. plus. Good. Is less than or equal to. What does that? What do I write? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, the, uh, is less than symbol. We use the inequality symbol. Is less than or equal to, and then forty. Forty. You guys get it? Mm -hmm. So do you see how both could be in the sentence? Yeah. Okay. Are there any questions? Yeah. Um. So I thought that we established like a. 
Okay, the question is that I didn't establish, that we established a while ago, the order didn't matter. 100% I want you translating properly. And so if this were a less than, as opposed to more than, it would be wrong if you didn't switch the terms. So we are always switching. And I have never said it's okay. Maybe the value is the same, but for my translating what I'm expecting, I want them translated properly. That is my expectation. Okay. Because I want to set you up always for success, not half the time. All right, so some tricky ones are X is at least five, is at least five. Think of money in your pocket. I have at least 20 bucks. So can I go tonight? I don't know. My friend says, hey, you want to go to the fair? I said, well, I have at least 20 bucks. So does that mean I can go or I can't go? Um, so tell me about at least, Blake. X is less than or equal to five. Wait, at least. Would it be greater than or equal to five? If I have at least 20 bucks, what could be in my pocket? Oh, more than. 20. Greater than or equal to. Right. I've got at least $20, so I'm sure I can pitch in to go to the fair, right? So X is greater than or equal to. It's almost opposite. Least and greater than or equal to. Y is at most 10. Y is at most 10. Yes. Y is less than or equal to 10. Yep. Oh, y is no more than 6. Y is no more than 6. Uh, Charlie. Uh, P is less than or, or P is less than or equal to 6. Correct. Number, next one. N is no less than 8. N is greater than or equal to 8. Yep. Okay, so now let's uh, pause the recording, and I want you to take a minute and try and... Actually, let's do these together. Twice a number x plus 4 is at least 10. Who wants to do this one? Twice a number x plus 4. How about Rebecca? Uh, 2x plus 4 is less than 10. Is at least. Oh, is at least 10. So what am I doing for my symbol? Uh, less than, is less than. No. Nope. If I have at least 25 kids. Oh, is, is greater than or equal to? Yep. 10. Okay. 5 less than 3 times y is at most 19. Is at most 19. Kiana. 3y minus 5. Good. She saw the less than there, so we're going to do our 3y over here. And my 5 is over here, just like she said. Is at most. Is less than or equal to 19. Yep. Okay. Twice the sum of x and 9. Twice the sum of x and 9. You should be writing as we're going, not just listening. So you have something to refer back to. Isaiah. 2, open parentheses, x um, plus 9. Is no more than. Is no more than. Less than or equal to 35. Perfect. Okay, and then the last one, 15, is less than six times the difference of P and 7. Someone I haven't heard from. 15. How about Dayasha? Okay, 15 is less than or equal to Six. So six parentheses P minus seven. P minus seven. Okay, questions there. Now I want to look at that. What did we say that last one was? Fifteen, 15 is less than six times. Fifteen is less than six times P minus seven. Okay, let's do that one. Let's simplify that. We're going to simplify this just like it's an equation. And we're going to, what do I do first? Yes. Divide both sides by 6. I would if it divided evenly, but it doesn't. So I don't think I'm going to, because then I might be into a, a, a fraction. Then you could just distribute it. 
I would distribute. 15 is less than 6p minus 42. Next step, go. Add 42 to both sides. Mm -hmm. And we get 57. Next step. Divide by 6 by both sides. P. And 6 goes into 57. 6 times 9 is 54. So I'm going to say 9. And then I have a remainder of 3, right? 6 times 9 is 54. Remainder of 3 over 6. 54 minus, 57 minus 54 is 3. So, which is the same thing as 9.5, right? 9 and 5 tenths. All right, so here's mistake number one that kids make. Most of the time when kids are graphing the variables on the left and they get something like this, right? And they go, okay, I've got to do this and I have zero and five and uh, it's solid and it's starting here and it goes like that, right? The di and notice what they, no sometimes kids link, uh, notice that this direction and the arrow go in the same, but that doesn't always work. If your variable's on the left, it's going to be a little bit different. Now, you have two, two ways you can do this. I personally like to read from the variable. So I'm going to write it. I know I need what two numbers? Zero, Zero, Zero and nine and five tenths, right? Now, is it going to be solid or open? open. Where's my starting point? OK. And it's going to be open. Now. What comes into question here is the directionality. I read from the variable. P, right, is what? P is next to greater than 9.5. P is which direction is the greater than numbers, to the right or to the left? Right. To the right. So I just read from the variable. P, I'm going to do it in yellow. P is next to the greater than, P is greater than 9.5. Isn't this arrow going in the greater than direction? Yes, it is. 100%. This is a number line. That's what that means. 0, 9.5, 10.5. 11.5, I mean, this is a number line. Yeah. So that's why it's going in the greater than direction. What I don't understand is you're saying that it's going, it's going in the greater than direction. Because on a number line from 0 to infinity, here's 0. I get, I get with that. I'm saying how do you, like, I don't understand how you found, like, found that from the 9.5 is less than <laughs> I read from the variable. P, notice, it, the P is touching the open part, which is the greater than. Do you, are you looking up here? Don't look at me. Look at my th thing. Okay, I'm going to go back. It's P, there's the greater than, 9 and 5 tenths. So P is touching the greater than portion, 9.5. Now, the other way, because he's not understanding that or seeing that, you can rewrite it. You can always rewrite it, right? I'm going to. I'm just trying to clean it up a little. Okay, we can rewrite this as, notice the P is close to the big opening, and then 9.5, right? Now, if the P is on the left, I can start at the 9.5, and I can go the direction of the arrow. Does that make sense? So you, A, have to read from the variable, or B, rewrite it so your variable's on the left. You can't just follow the direction of the arrow. Is that clear? OK. That is a big mistake that a lot of people make when they have to end up graphing things like x is less than 8.
Charlie, read from the variable on that one. I'm going to use 0 and 8. Is it going to be a solid or an open circle? Open. Open. Okay, now, read from the variable. It's gonna, X. It's going to go to the, it's going to go to the left. It's going to the left because it's getting smaller, less than. I just, I just like what I did for this one, I just, when it's pointing to the X, when the arrow's pointing to the X, you just flip it around. And then when it's pointing, like, when, you, when it's pointing to the X, when it's like, the, when the X is on the right, you flip the arrow, you flip it around and then you're the arrow pointing that So way. you're rewriting it like this. Just in my head. In your head, yes. which is fine. You can do that. Yes? Why is it an open circle? If there's a one under it. It should be open. There's no line under it. With the, oh, I, I was looking at the... Okay. X. I'm moving on because we're kind of out of time. Okay. So, is everybody clear on that one? So that's mistake number one that people get when they have the variable on that right side. They don't read from the variable. Okay, some phrases that can be confusing. How do we translate five more than x? How do I translate 5 more than x? Yes. X plus 5. X plus 5. That's proper. That's proper translating because it says more than. Exactly what I've taught since the beginning. Okay. How do we translate 5 is more than x? Yep. Um, 5 is greater than x. Perfect. How do I translate x less 8. Yes. Nope, there's no than. We switch the terms when it says more than, oh, less than. X minus yep, it's x minus 8. The next one, oh. keep going. 8 minus x. Yes, 8 minus x. And then the next one is x is less than 8, is less than 8. x is less than 8. What are you going to do, Charlie? x is less than 8. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's killing me. Okay, and then the last one, x is at least 8. Yep. x is greater than or equal to 8. It, X is greater than or equal to 8. So do you see how these can get confusing? Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm going to have to skip this because um, they already have all the answers up. <laughs> okay, so now another way we could ask this is circle each solution for the given inequalities. X is less than 5. X is less than 5. So what am I doing? Uh, yes. 4 is a solution. What about 5? No. What about negative 2? Yes. What about 8? No. 0? Yes. And 3? Yes. Okay. So this is another way that they could ask you. Keep going. All right. So this is pretty much it for, I want you to get, oh, for graphing, but I do want you to get used to this language. All real numbers less than or equal to 3. What do we play? What do we place for all real numbers? Um, same two people. Positive number? No. Yep. X. Because X represents a set in um, X is less than or equal to 3. Because X represents a set. It's not one answer. It's infinite. You guys stop. Stop. Okay. Number two. What would it be? How about Irene again? Okay. Evan? What would the next one be? Uh, X is less than negative 4. Yep. So you understand how to use this language. Yeah. This will... Okay. I'm going to, um, okay, so a number X is at least, if you want to pause it and do the problems on your own. Okay, now let's check our answers. <laughs> okay, a number X is at least two. So what would that be? 
Somebody I haven't heard from. How about Elizabeth? F is greater than or equal to. Good. A number Y is less than negative 2. Okay, Dylan? Y less than negative 2. Good. And... A number N is no more. Alex? N is less than or equal to 2. Perfect. Okay. So I think that's pretty good for right now. I'm going to move on. If you want to pause this and check. There, I go back. And then you don't have any answers, and you can try and check your answers. There you go. Pause the recording. Try and do some practice problems. And here are the answers. Now we're going to go on to working on some, whoops, some problems. Move on to <coughs> problem number two. Now, we do not graph until we simplify and get x alone. So let's look at number seven. What do we need to do? What do we need to do? Emma. Okay, so when I divide by a negative and we're doing inequalities, what do I get? Kaylee? We flip that inequality. And so what do we get? Uh, x is greater than negative 6. So when we divide or multiply by a negative, divide or multiply, we flip the inequality, okay? This becomes quite disastrous for kids, especially while they're learning it for the first time. Because if you forget to flip, let's say I give you a problem, and it's a two-part problem to do that and graph. Three problems, you could get six points wrong. Right? Because, first of all, you forget to flip the inequality, so then you graph it wrong. So does that make sense? So... The big problems that kids have is, A, they forget to flip when they divide by, by a negative or multiply by a negative. It's not enough to just have a problem like this. Um, uh, negative 28 is greater than 4y. That doesn't mean we're going to flip the inequality. I still just divide by 4, divide by 4. I didn't divide by a negative. There's a negative in it. I did not divide by it. The inequality stays the same. Do you notice that? Okay. So we only divide. Okay. So the next one, what are we going to do, Evan? Good. Multiplying both sides by negative 3. And then we have to flip that sign in the middle. So I get y is, e is less than or equal to negative 21. And then we graph. Are there any questions so far? I really kind of like this problem. Uh, let me go back. Oh, I'm not past it. I really passed it. <coughs> Sorry, guys. I don't know where it went to, but it was here. So I'm going to do it right here. So if I have something like <coughs> 7 minus x is less than 4. Okay, what do we do first? Go. Add 7 to both sides. Add? Oh, sorry, subtract 7 to both sides. 
inverse operations. It's a positive 7, so I'm going to subtract 7. Okay? Negative x is less than uh, negative 3. So now what am I going to do? Yep. I can divide by negative 1. And you're going to get x is greater than 3. x, I have to flip the inequality. And, oops. And I get uh, positive 3. Okay? It looks like it's simple, but there's actually two steps. Okay, let's go to, oh, darn it. I'm going to pause it. Okay, Joe is saving for a new bike, a $500 bike. He currently has $125. If he saves $15 per week, how much, how long must he wait to save at least $600 to cover tax and extras? What is my unknown? What is X going to stand for? Yes. How many weeks are on? Weeks. Okay, so what's my starting amount? Yep. 125. 125. Am I adding or subtracting? Adding. Plus, and what's the rest of this equation going to look like? 15x. 15x. Now, how long must you wait to have at least 600? Uh, at least. It's greater than or equal to 600. Good. So what's irrelevant? The 500, shoot, I got to take that, hold on. I talked to her. I was waiting. Okay, so when we're here, right, here's the thing I want you to remember when you're doing this with these inequalities, okay, I get to, X is greater than 31 and two-thirds. You got to make sense of that. What does X stand for? Yeah. It means that you have to save at least 32 weeks. 32 weeks. I've got to round up because I only get paid per week. Does that make sense? Okay, so we would have to go to the 32. I have one more water, uh, uh, word problem. I'd like you to pause it and work on it, and I will show you the results. Okay, goodbye, you guys. Okay, now let's check our work. Um, so our starting amount is going to be 500. Our unknown is going to be minutes, so we'll say X is done for the number of minutes. And my starting point is 500. I'm subtracting. Okay, so now I'm going to subtract the 500. It's always easiest to undo the 500. Now divide by negative 4. And then we get, we have to flip the inequality. So x is at least 110 minutes. All right. Um, I'd like to go over a few more multi-step problems. Hold on. All right, so now let's look at number four. Um, how would we do number four? Daniel. For number four, you would first distribute them, so you'd multiply three times x and three times negative five. Okay, and we got this. Whoops, sorry. And then? You add 15. We add 15. We always undo our addition and subtraction. <laughs> we always undo our adding and subtracting. Keep going. So we add 15 to both sides. Adding 15 to both sides. Yep. So it becomes 3x, which is less than or equal to 27. So 27? You divide by uh, 3 to both sides. And you get x is less than Okay, and then we only need two numbers on our number line, 0 and 9. It's a solid circle starting at the 9, and we're going in the less than direction. Now, um, one thing I want to just show you is that we can notice that at this point on number 4, we distribute it in, and then we divide out by 3, right? Well, what happens if we just right away divide out the 3? Then we don't have to contend with it. It makes things much simpler. Now, this only really works if both sides are divisible by 3. So I have x minus 5 is less than or equal to 4. If the other side had been 19, I wouldn't necessarily want to divide out right by 3 because then I'm going to be left with a fraction nightmare. Well, not a nightmare, but I'm going to have to find common denominators and add and subtract. So, but when both sides can be divided by that 3, it really kind of simplifies it. 
So I'm dividing both sides by 3. I get x minus 5 is less than or equal to 4. And now I'm going to add 5, add 5. x is less than or equal to 9. So we can get there the same way. All right, so that's really it for today. Um, hope you enjoyed the 